Before we get started, if you aren't familiar with Matter, Thread and Home Assistant, you want to check out the last video I did in this series, which explains all that, and will be linked to the cards above for you to check out. Right, with that out of the way, let's get this stuff set up. To be clear, I'm covering the process of setting up Matter over Thread devices as a general concept, as that's the sort of more complicated route, and the route I generally would personally recommend. Setting up Matter over Wi-Fi devices is very much a similar process, it just doesn't involve the thread border router stuff, and it's likely a little bit easier as well, so you shouldn't have any trouble getting that stuff set up, mostly following this process too, just skipping over the thread parts. Now, the first step for setting up these is to create a thread border router. If you have an existing smart hub that will do that for you, for example, an Apple TV or a Samsung smart thing station, you can connect via those hubs. But since I'm the sort of person who likes to overcomplicate things and to have total control over my smart home tech, I will be using this Zigbee dongle from Sonoff. In short, because Zigbee and Thread use the same sort of base standard, 802.15.4, with the right firmware, this dongle can actually do both Zigbee and Thread connectivity at the same time. You will need the Zigbee dongle-e, which is based on the EFR32MG21 chip, not the CC2652P based dongle that looks almost identical, and I actually have one of those as well, but this one is the one you need. You can then head to Dark XST Scilabs or Silicon Labs firmware flasher website, linked in the description, click on the ZB dongle-e option and connect to it. You should then get some options for flashing either Zigbee, OpenThread, or Multipat. I recommend Multipan, as this will let you connect to both Zigbee and Thread devices simu simultaneously with what seems like very little downsides. If you're having any trouble doing this flashing by the way, you might need to install the CP210X drivers that I'll also link through the guide in the description and then try to flash it again and unfortunately you will need Chrome or Edge for this to work Firefox just won't work with it. Once you've flashed the dongle, you can then plug it into your Home Assistant system, and then you'll need to head to the add-on store and install the Silicon Labs multi-protocol add-on. Head to the configuration tab of that, uh, select your dongle from the top list. I had two options, the longer one is the one that I went with and seemed to work. You'll need to set the baud rate to 460,800, disable the hardware flow control, automatically flash firmware and coprocessor communication tracing options, and then make sure that the op enable open thread border router is on and hit save. Then head back to the info tab at the top and hit start. All being well, it will start as normal and you can now head to settings and then devices and integrations and add the thread and matter uh, integrations, which should also automatically add the open thread border router integration as well. When you go to set up the thread integration, you'll need to pick the Silicon Labs multi-protocol option for the border router, but then you're pretty much set to go. Now, adding the devices themselves to Home Assistant requires a mobile device so that you can scan the QR code that's on the site or on the product somewhere to actually do the pairing process. It's pretty easy though. You just head to the devices tab and hit add matter device, scan the QR code on the device itself with it powered on, and then just let it do its thing. It will take a minute or two, quite a while in terms of setting up stuff like this, but once it's done, that's it, it's connected. For the Nanoleaf uh, Essentials bulb, while it did run through the connection process just fine, it failed to actually connect to Home Assistant at the sort of final stage. I had to do a reset process on the bulb, which was pretty painful. You turn the bulb off for three seconds, and then on for no more than a second, or under a second, and then repeat that process five times, where you then leave it on at the last turn, and then it flashes the bulb red to show you that it's been reset. 
Once I then scanned the QR code again, it worked fine, it added itself to Home Assistant, and we're all good. Now, it's worth noting that this EVE Energy you know, smart plug I have currently only exposes the actual sort of switch function, the power switch uh, function to Home Assistant, not any of the energy and power monitoring stuff. That's only available if you do it through Apple HomeKit. Now, I'm hoping that they'll offer a firmware update to support that properly later, but I can't be all that sure. The Nanoleaf bulb works great, both with RGB control and the cool white and warm white LEDs in there too. It isn't the absolute brightest, but it's a pretty decent choice and not too heinously expensive for a smart bulb. One thing that I do want to note here is that not all thread devices are matter devices. This Onviz H2 smart switch is a HomeKit over thread device, and while in theory that might work via the HomeKit integration, currently it doesn't. That is a shame because it looks like a really great bit of kit. It comes with this magnetic base that you can either stick or screw to a surface and the remote just, you know, sticks in there. You can then pick the remote up to, you know, move it around the room or whatever if you want to and then you have a place to store it back or just stick it on the wall to use it like a normal switch. It's a really cool design. Plus, it has these five different buttons, which you can map to over a bunch of different things, and it even comes with a little sticker pack so that you know what each, of the, what each of the buttons does. It's just a shame that I can't get this to work without an Apple you know, TV or HomePod. So that is how to set up Matter devices in Home Assistant. It's remarkably simple, and barring a couple of little hiccups, it's been pretty smooth, at least for the two devices I have access to. The number of devices, especially the matter over thread ones, is remarkably small right now. So if I was building a new smart home system from scratch, I would likely stick with Zigbee, at least for now, although I would get this ZB dongle-e and flash the multi-pan firmware on it before I start setting things up, so that I can later add thread devices or MATA devices if I fancy. With that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the MATA devices, the integration with Home Assistant, and also what sort of devices do you want to see added to the, that sort of supported list uh, to work with MATA and Thread and Home Assistant? Love to hear that in the comments down below. I'll link to both all of the products that I've talked about here, which I did purchase with my own money, just to make that one clear, uh, and the Dark XSD GitHub repo and the Flasher website, as well as also the very helpful guide that talks through the whole setting up the, uh, you know, flashing the firmware, setting up the drivers, that sort of stuff, uh, in the description if you are interested. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to check out more videos in this series, I've got a whole Smart Home series already up on the channel, including all of the Zigbee stuff that I already have set up and working. Otherwise, that's kind of it. I'll leave some other links in the description if you want to support the channel and, you know, pick up some open source response time or latency tools if you're interested. But yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.